Then gathering this afternoon at the Knapp Center, it's Des Moines Hometown Team Weekend. The Bulldogs wearing special commemorative jerseys talking about the link between their hometown, the city of Des Moines, and Drake University. For the Bulldogs and the Salukis, the 95th meeting. Southern Illinois leads the series 59 to 35. The Bulldogs, though, have won four of the last six. And as we mentioned, the last meeting just a couple of days ago, January the 19th, Southern Illinois with a 66-49 victory. They led by only eight at halftime, but they are off to a really good second half start. Let's take a look at our Westside Auto Pro starting lineup. And for Southern Illinois, a lot of new faces, but you look at the big guy in the middle, Barrett Benson, maybe able to match Liam Robbins in terms of size. Yeah, Barrett Benson, 6'10", 240, he's a big body in there, had a really good game the last time against Drake, 18 points, 10 rebounds, him on the interior playing defense against Liam Robbins and his ability to score on the offensive end, big key for the Salukis tonight. That was his first double-double, there's the Bulldogs starting five. Yeah, and Roman Penn, the league leader in assists per game, Liam Robbins, the league leader in blocks per game, those two fantastic sophomores around along with DJ Will Wilkins show the future is bright here in the Knapp Center for the Bulldogs. Carl Chevrolet brings you the keys to the game. And between these two teams, listen, so they already played once, but it was a one-sided game. For SIU, they have to keep that Mullins magic. This team has won four in a row. They're toward the top of the standings in the in conference play. Harness the energy, stick to defense and the intensity that brought you this success. See if you can win a couple more games on the road. And who's next? Listen, last time against DU, it was Benson that stepped up and had a big game. McGill's coming off 27 against Loyola. Jones has played well. Who's gonna step up by the young guys and for Drake? This team has been really good at home. They were flat in that loss to Southern Illinois, coming off a buzzer-beating loss against Indiana State. But at home, they averaged 16 points per game more in the Nap Center and shoot it better. They have to dictate pace, get out in transition, and get easy looks in that primary or secondary break because it's going to be tough to score against the Salukis in the half court. Tom O'Neill, a veteran of 44 years of college basketball officiating, Leads the officiating crew, Brad Perry, Gene Grimshaw, make up the rest of the officiating assignment today. As Robbins on the first shot of the ball game, leaves it a little bit long, and the rebound is taken down by Lance Jones. Now early on, getting the ball into Liam Robbins. We've seen Coach Darren DeVries do that. Makes a concerted effort to get it in there to the big fella. Now it'll be interesting to see if Southern Illinois will counter and want to get Benson some early touches. Uh, Southern, when they play offense, they're willing they, they want to be aggressive in the full court, but they're willing to run plenty of shot clock and run it down. They know they can execute and get good looks, just like that one from Domas. Domas the Mask averages 13.8 per game. He's also their leading rebounder at 5.2 a game. Dishes out about three assists a game, an 81% free throw shooter. He's just done it all in his first season. Penn looking for Robbins. Robbins scores to tie the ball game. And a nice pass in on the inside there by Roman Penn, finding the big fella underneath. And you see why he's so tough to guard. When Liam Robbins is rolling to the rim, he's just got arms for days, reaching up to grab that thing and lay it in. Tough to defend. Bulldogs extending their defense against Southern Illinois. Eric McGill works his way into the paint. Nothing going, so he bounces for Benson. Benson turns on Robbins, leans into him, and then Robbins gets the block. It's Jackson looking for three, but the ball is tipped in by Robbins. Wow, how about that? Big fella going from end to end. You gotta love the hustle out of the young big fella. Liam Robbins gets the block on one end to start the break, and then hustles down to get a second chance point. That's part of what's made him so good is his ability to play more extended minutes. You can see just more comfortable in his body here in his sophomore season. Eric McGill misses the shot, but it was Suggs who charged in, got the offensive rebound, and now shoots and misses, and Robbins has the rebound, and the Bulldogs have a player down. And you saw Roman Penn go down pretty hard, grabbing his face. You hope that's not any type of head injury. There was quite a collision among three Bulldog players there. Let's see if we can take a look at it here. Roman Penn went down in a heap, watches that long carom off the rim and looks like two Bulldogs. Ah. And yeah, it looks like Suggs inadvertent, not on anything malicious, but might've gotten Roman Penn up in that jaw area, yeah, right with his head as he was going down for the basketball. Penn, who averages over six assists a game, which is 21st best in the country, tries to drive on Jones, and Jones gets the game's first foul. 
And Jones, a pretty good defender out on the perimeter. A young guy, just a freshman, but he's got great quickness and a strong body. Coach Brian Mellons really likes the potential for the future of Jones. He's shown an ability to do it on the offensive end, just hasn't found a consistent stroke yet. Brian Mullins, a two-time Missouri Valley Conference Defensive Player of the Year during his stint as a player at Southern Illinois, had been on the Loyola staff for a couple of years prior to taking the head coaching job at his alma mater. Shot clock down to two, down to one. And Jonah Jackson recognized it, but really didn't have a shot, just threw one up in desperation. That's suffocating that time. Really good defense there for the Salukis. Darren DeVries on the Bulldog bench. Mullins and DeVries, again, two of the five coaches in the Missouri Valley Conference who played in the conference. And just how special is that, Larry? We get to go and, and watch these coaches that have an affinity and a background with this league. And I, th I think that's part of the reason this league has been so lucky to have success over time. There's so much history, and having this many coaches that want to come back to the league they played in, that, that makes it feel like more of a destination. They want to stay here and continue to make the Valley great. Anthony Murphy into the lane. Leaves it short, but tips it in. The Bulldogs on second chance opportunities have taken the lead. And that is an area where Southern can continue to do a better job. They have a net negative rebounding margin. They can be susceptible on that offensive glass. Seen that early on, like you mentioned, two opportunities here. Darren DeVries wanted his team to be more physical today. So far they have as Suggs drives and scores. Now how about that move, the big time left-handed finish for Suggs. Wilkins for three. Wilkins really struggling shooting the three ball, just 28% behind the arc in Missouri Valley Conference play. And he was so good from three, hovering around 40% last season in his freshman campaign. And DJ Wilkins keeps on keeping on, just unable to knock that one down. Darren DeVries talks about him needing to get his swagger back. He had it last year. Not and, so much this year. And it just tells you confidence is so important, especially for young players can go a long way as we see a guy that's very, very confident, Liam Robbins with the big time block. Looks like the shot clock did not reset, so the official is gonna stop play here and take a look. But you just see the body control of Liam Robbins able to take the contact from Barrett Benson right in his chest, keeping two hands high. And watch this, great defense. So yes, he gets off the ground, but then stays vertical deflecting that thing right back in Barrett Benson's face. Robbins with second block today, now 61, and every time he gets one, it establishes a new single season break record. It's a one point game early with break up six to five. Great with a 6-5 lead over Southern Illinois, and Liam Robbins has made an impact early on both ends of the floor. Yeah, you look at him rolling to the rim. Watch these arms. You just throw the ball up by the rim, let the young fella go get it, and then on the defensive side, does such a great job protecting the paint. Liam Robbins, two blocks early on. He's picked up a couple of rebounds. He's got four points, really off to a good start. Again, Robbins with 61 blocks in his season, and that is a single season great record, the old record held by Nick McGlynn. That was 56, so Robbins now 17th in the country in block shots, averaging 2.7 blocks per game. And he already has two, and the ball game not even five minutes old. And how about the story, just in general, we talked in the open, Larry, about remaking the rosters and how Southern Illinois was going through that Coach Mullins this past year with 11 new players on his roster. Liam Robbins, a late find for the Drake Bulldogs last season, was really blossomed into one of the best players in the Valley. Played at Davenport Assumption High School in Davenport, Iowa, but was only 6'5 when he was a junior in high school. Sprouted to seven foot, but also sprouted to 300 pounds. Went to Sunrise Christian Academy and got in great shape. Noah Thomas has come onto the floor for the Bulldogs to play the point. Also, Garrett Sturtz is out there. There's Damask for three with the miss, and Sturtz grabs the rebound and gets fouled. And a good time, good box out there by Liam Robbins. And Sturt's going up and grabbing that thing with two hands. Benson, kind of a silly one, a cheapie. Definitely got him on the wrist, but that far away from the rim. That's a pretty low percentage play from Benson. Great tries to add to a one-point lead. Five minutes have been played in this one. Noah Thomas, who's had some shooting woes of late, trying to get something going. 
And you see just a smothering defense from Southern Illinois. Watch how well they move together. Don't allow any open driving lanes from the perimeter. Make offenses stagnant. Garrett Benson comes down with a rebound. He averages the team best 5.6 rebounds a game for the Salukis. Basically, though, they have a lot of balance in their offense. They have three players who average in double figures. Is that ball deflected high into the air? And they say that a Bulldog not only deflected the ball, but also the piece of a Saluki, and it's Anthony Murphy getting the foul. Yeah, it looks like they got Anthony Murphy helping on with the reach in from the side. And, you know, both these teams are, are willing to run offense in the half court. We've mentioned Coach Darren DeVries last year. This was an up and down team. This year, a little more defensive minded. They've had to learn to win differently. But Southern, there's no confusion in the formula. This Saluki ball club executes on offense they get to their spots they create space make shots at the end of it defense is really their hallmark Brett Brown number 24 out of the court for the Salukis who have five seconds to shoot it Benson nice. puts up the hook shot and knocks it down and that's the that's the great part about having a senior a guy that's played college basketball for a few years just the patience as the shot clock winds down taking the contact to the big fella Benson a grad transfer from Northwestern helped the Wildcats to their first NCAA tournament appearance Bulldogs really struggling against that Saluki defense. McGill coming up with the steal. Kind of threw a straight arm at Garrett Sturtz. At least that's what the crowd thought. But Brad Faris said, no, I think the foul goes the other direction. Yeah, a good physicality that time for McGill. Generally, if you're the aggressor on the offensive side, they're not going to call that. But watch how he takes Garrett Sturtz's space. Yeah, he extended himself a little bit. But I like the aggressiveness going hard to the rim. The Saluki Ball Club, they're willing to get out and transition off turnovers. you got to be careful with the basketball. Their guards will tap that thing out and go get toward the other end to get it cheapies in transition. McGill here got a trip to the line. They actually gave the foul to Anthony Murphy, and that's his second foul. So he will have to leave the lineup for the Bulldogs. And now Liam Robbins goes out, so... Brian Mullins, Coach Brian Mullins taking Barrett Benson out to give him a blow as well. Look for these two to be on the floor together as neither coach wants to give an inch in that matchup. Actually, Murphy, even though he had those two fouls, did stay on the court. Sturtz finds Penn, who goes around the screen of Sturtz. See Brian Mullins gesturing to his defense off the Saluki bench. Thomas gets the screen from Antonio Pilipovic. His fall away with seven ah. seconds on the shot clock is good. And sometimes good offense just beats good defense. Southern Illinois, another great possession. They have been really locked in defensively in these first seven minutes. Noah Thomas that time just hitting a tough shot. McGill for three. And that, that's where he's special, Larry. That's where McGill can be a real differentiator for this team, his ability to heat up in a hurry. Shooting 36% from three on the on the year, but as I mentioned, 27 in their last game and a big win against Loyola. Couple of hustle saves by the Bulldogs by Penn and Thomas. Ten seconds on the shot clock. That's going to be a familiar story this afternoon against this red hot Saluki defense. Murphy from the top knocks down the three. Anthony Murphy, who over his last two ball games had hit just three baskets in 12 tries, but he has two early baskets this afternoon. Tying the score at 11. So what you have to do offensively, Larry, when you're playing against a team that closes out as well as this Southern Illinois bunch, as we see McGill missing as he gets in the lane, you got to be ready to shoot on the perimeter. So you can never pause. You have to make sure everything is in quick motion as we see that time. Johnny on the spot. Garrett Sturts, the back cut ninja, getting behind the defense in the secondary break. Another good find from Roman Penn. Penn again just doing an excellent job of finding Sturts. That combo has worked for yep. that kind of basket throughout this Drake season. Bulldogs by Perez McGill. Works the ball. Now Trent Brown with it. Shot clock down to four. The Bulldogs have also been strong at the defensive end. The mass shoots with nothing on the shot clock and knocks it down. Boy, and he's tough, isn't he? Just the size advantage over Roman Penn. You saw as soon as he caught it, Domask looked up at the shot clock, saw the time, saw the space, and coolly, calmly knocked that thing down over the smaller pen. Trent Brown 
fouls for Southern Illinois. It'll be great basketball when we return to the Nap Center. Here's the back that ninja. Great luck from Ken. Easy two for Sturts. The Bulldogs back to within one of Southern Illinois at 14-13 Salukis. Four lead changes, two ties early. Neither team is led by more than three. Southern Illinois with a one-point lead and three-point shooting in the ballgame. Thus far, favors the Salukis. Yeah, dude, getting hot early. Three of five from distance. Here we see McGill knocking down his first three. And Anthony Murphy on the other side and at the end of the shot clock. Look, understanding time, understanding space, knowing he's at the end of the shot clock, really only had one option, hand down, man down. Marcus Domas, the big time three knocked down his second of this basketball game. Good look at Roman Penn a moment ago in the hometown jerseys that the Bulldogs are wearing just for today, designed by a local designer, John Bosley. And those commemorative shirts are being sold around the arena and in the city of Des Moines. People seem to really like them. Yeah, it's really created a buzz around the city. Just, you know, Des Moines really hasn't had something quite like this. You've seen a number of, of teams that do something similar obviously a kind of a hallmark back to Denver in the 1970s with their skyline on the jerseys but quite a buzz around Des Moines a lot of people picking up these new Drake unis Penn turns on Brown and hits a good makes a good shot that good look anyway but it doesn't fall and Southern Illinois a chance to extend their one point lead and so that's the difference Larry versus a eight foot shot what Southern forces you to do is put that into a 12 point, 12 foot shot. Just makes it a little difficult. Their defense is always forcing you out further and further. Lowers those percentages. Damask to the rack to score. Eight points early for Marcus Damask, the outstanding freshman, Mr. Basketball of Wisconsin last season. Oh yeah, that's a tough move going through, just matriculating through the lane, left hand finish. Full complement of skill set from the freshman. Noah Thomas finds Wilkins, an open look for Roman Penn. Filipovich tries to keep it alive, but can't, and Trent Brown grabs it, a freshman from Scottsdale, Arizona. Fight on back-to-back -back state championships at Pinnacle High School in Scottsdale. And that's one thing that Brian Mullins is looking for, yep. is guys who played in state championship games. His recruiting class includes four players who won state championships last year or in the last two years. And Domask again. Got to get up and take away his airspace. Feeling it early on, already in double figures with 11. But you talk about Coach Mullins, and, and that's exactly what he wants. He wants guys that are winners. He wants guys that are tough-minded, especially with his expectations so high for these kids. Wilkins loses it, recovers it, and a foul called. And the yeah. foul going to be whistled against Southern Illinois. And watch Domask again. Garrett Sturt's giving him a little bit of space. Domas doesn't need much. You see, he's got that quick release at that six foot six frame. Shoots the ball high enough that hard for smaller defenders to contest that shot. Saluki's on an eight to nothing run as the Bulldogs inbound. And again, just watch how tough it is for the Bulldogs to get good shots and good touches in that case, even on an inbounds play. Yeah, and, and then there's, your spacing gets off because the defense forces you out of the lane. Watch on, on the defensive end. This Saluki team does a great job not allowing anybody to set up shop within a couple feet of the lane. And as soon as you see a player drive from the perimeter, their entire team is moving in unison. Defense on a string, so well schooled, so well coached. The mass 6'6", and it's Garrett Sturts at 6'3", who's trying to stay with him. Brown. Makes a nice move. Now Benson fed on the post, gets around Robbins. Robbins fouls him, counts the shot, and it'll be an and one for Barrett Benson. And a nice move on the interior from Benson. You saw the coaching staff during one of the timeouts for the Salukis advocating for Liam Robbins keeps taking that space. They were talking to the officials about once that once Benson makes his move, there's a lot of body contact there. That time a good job advocating for it, getting the foul, Barrett Benson completing the three-point play. He's got five, and the Salukis have an 11 to nothing run. An open look for Garrett Sturtz. And it's a one and done, and a rebound by Harwin Francois, the sophomore from Fort Myers, Florida, by way of Daytona State College. He's an outstanding three-point shooter. Benson steps out, and he nails a three. Benson showing off his versatility 
Stepping out and knocking that one down. The Saluki's rolling on the offensive end. A big 12-point lead here. Just over 11 minutes into this first half as you see that. And he's a capable shooter. He's got a good stroke. Needs a little bit of time out there. But watch, hands ready, feet ready. Just goes up smoothly, knocks that one down. The big-time players, Benson and Domask, sizzling here for the Salukis. That they are again. Benson out of Northwestern, a graduate transfer, helped them to an NCAA tournament. He was a four-star recruit out of high school at Willowbrook, Illinois. Chris Collins able to land him in that Wildcat program. So right now, Darren DeVries using a timeout with his team having given up 14 unanswered yep. points. Yeah, and, and, and part of that is, you know, it, it's really difficult. Part of what the Southern Illinois style does is it makes it really difficult because offense is such a struggle, you want to rest on the defensive end. That's where the Saluki team takes advantage. If you rest, they're going to find ways to carve you up offensively and keep up the defensive effort. I would think it requires a great deal of offensive patience to play against the Saluki ball club. Yeah, strength patience, spacing, all that stuff. You got to be smart playing against this team. Now the Bulldogs try to set their offense as they go down to eight seconds on the shot clock. Sturtz is open from the corner to nail it. His fifth three of the year and 16 tries. Not known as a three-point shooter. As you mentioned, his cuts are usually backdoor cuts. They get him baskets, but steps up and hits a big three to end that 14-0 Southern Illinois run. Yeah, he's a reluctant shooter as we see the screen here for Jones got called for a moving screen but good pass so part of what Southern Illinois does on defense they know their matchups they know the people they want to shoot your primary scorer is going to have difficulty against their defense they're going to make your third fourth and fifth guys step up that time Garrett Sturtz has got to be aggressive knock down that three Lance Jones gets his second foul Brian Mullen takes him out also leaving the lineup Marcus Damask Eight minutes to go in the first half. The Bulldogs down by nine, and we've got an official timeout coming with exactly eight to play in the first half. The Bulldogs down by as many as 12. Right now, they trail it by nine. Southern Illinois with a 25-16 lead, getting big minutes from Barrett Benson. Eight minutes left in the first half. Southern Illinois with a 25-16 lead. Single session discount tickets for the 2020 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship are on sale now. Reserve your seat to the 30th anniversary of Arch Madness in St. Louis by ordering online at archmadness.com. And Adam with only three games separating eighth from first in the Missouri yeah. Valley Conference's play begins today. This is really going to be a wild it Arch, Mad Arch Madness, it isn't is. it? It is, and it's always a mashup in there. And, you know, the last few years, it's been difficult for teams to separate themselves at the top of the standings. I still think Northern Iowa and Loyola, for my money, are the two best teams in this league. But as you can see, they can be beat, especially the Valley's been really successful at home this year. Once you get to a neutral floor, Larry, anything can happen. Jonah Jackson caught pushing off. He gets the foul. The ball goes to Southern Illinois, and they try to go back to a double-digit lead. As that offensive foul against Jackson will be the third Bulldog turnover. Southern Illinois has turned it over twice. Brown looks inside for Benson, turns on nice. Robinson, scores. That's the second time we've seen a left-handed jump hook from Benson. And they're really isolating him on the interior, trying to put pressure on Liam Robbins, knowing that he's so important to this Drake offensive attack. Well, you mentioned it earlier. Benson had a huge game yep. against the Bulldogs in Carbondale. 18 points, 10 rebounds on a couple of blocks. So yep. obviously, you go back the same direction, and it's working as Roman Penn knocks down the shot for the Bulldogs, and that's his first basket of the day. Big-time players make big-time plays, and it was Barrett Benson stepping up on one side, and this side, Roman Penn, knowing his team needed a bucket. Found a spot. That 15 to 17 footer has disappeared in many instances in college basketball. Three point shot obviously taking precedence, but that's what Southern Illinois forces you to do. They put you in difficult spots. Trent Brown for three. And this Southern Illinois ball club from behind the arc has been on fire today and opening a 12 point lead once again against the Bulldogs. Yeah, Brown only 27% on the year, but he was three of six against Northern Iowa, shown an ability known as a shooter. Starts an offensive rebound, draws a foul. Southern Illinois now six of eight shooting the three ball. 
And, and they're not going to keep at that percentage are the Salukis, but you see they're very capable from out there as Roman Penn misses that one. Garrett Sturtz, I think Garrett Sturtz has given really good minutes to this Bulldog crew, whether it's back cuts, knocking down a three, or finding an opportunity for a second chance bucket. Those type of hustle plays are really important against a gritty Saluki ball club. Ronnie Suggs Jr. got the foul, his first. As starts the sophomore from Newton, Iowa, hits the free throw. Carrington Davis onto the floor for Southern Illinois. Was with Nebraska last year, but Torres Achilles did not play. And so there was a waiver, and therefore he's able to immediately be eligible for Southern Illinois. And by the way, Davis, not only Torres Achilles, did not play his last two years in high school because he was out with injuries that ended his season. Yeah, and that's always tough to see. You know, you, you get young guys that have to battle back through those injuries, but good to see him out on the floor getting an opportunity at Southern Illinois, helping build a culture with this young ball club. Drake extends their defense, something they were doing early in the year, but when Tramel Murphy was ruled out, suddenly the Bulldogs' depth didn't require, didn't allow them really to play as much as they would have liked at extending the defense. But it was really successful when they could do it. McGill looking for some help against Penn. Shot clock inside 10. Shot clock at five, and there's an offensive foul. Push spotted on McGill. Yeah, it looks like they got Benson that Benson, time coming me, up, right. setting the screen as McGill was handling the ball with six on the shot clock. And a kind of a little bit of a soft call here, but watch what Barrett Benson does. You're not allowed to take away somebody's space. You need to allow Roman Penn a little bit of space to run into you that time. Barrett Benson just a little over eager as he was going in to set that screen. Devon Jeremick, who did not play against the Bulldogs last time out because of an injury, comes onto the floor. Number 30 has not played in a lot of ball games, just his eighth appearance of the year for Southern, but Benson with his second foul. And so Sterevic gets the minutes. Robbins puts it to the floor against Sterevic and shoots and scores. And a good play, good patience that time. Liam Robbins going to his left hand, knowing that his length, it would be hard to contest that shot. Big time knockdown, pulling the Bulldogs within eight. Bulldogs want to take advantage of the fact that Benson's on the bench, yes. and so you got to figure that Robbins is going to get plenty of touches in the last five plus minutes of the first half. And a Sturts called on the foul. Yeah, a touch foul this time. Is Sturts trying to fight over that screen? Domas did a good job drawing the contact, creating space, and that time Liam Robbins just so much calmer when he has the basketball. Not playing a game of hot potato, trying to get it out of his hands, just better understands his spots, where he wants to get on the floor, and how he can be successful. McGill takes it right into the chest of Robbins. That's a heck of a take from Eric McGill, knowing the shot blocker's there. Watch this. This is experience, the jump stop. You get Liam Robbins off his feet and then jump into him to create some of that contact. Easy call for the official. Second foul called on Robbins. McGill, a 74% free throw shooter. That is his fifth point of the afternoon. Played his freshman year at SEMO and then transferred to Panola, Texas College for a year and then joined the Southern Illinois squad last year. So this is his second year at Southern Illinois and his third team that he's played for. Yeah, and he's, he's had a good career against the Bulldogs this year, 18 points. Four of eight from three. The first time they played at 17 points, six rebounds the last time he was in the Nap Center. So for whatever reason, sometimes players just have teams they like playing against. And Eric McGill likes to see that Drake Bulldog uniform. And McGill playing his best basketball the season right now, according to his coach, Brian Mullins. Wilkins takes the inbound speed, comes around the screen by Robbins to the baseline to uh, score. Yeah, that, that's a nice move, DJ Wilkins. He's had some difficulty this year consistently finding his scoring spots on the offensive end, but that time did a good job staying patient, rising up over the defense. Trent Brown with the pass from McGill. Brown tries to get around Jackson. Now McGill for three. And the red-hot shooting from Southern Illinois from the three-point line continues. Nice pure stroke that time from McGill, knocking down his second three. Penn tries to answer and can't, and the rebound taken by Jeremick. Jeremick didn't sign with Southern Illinois until September 4th. 
Wow. From Belgrade, Serbia. But he brings good size at 6'11 and 250. And he brings a pace on both ends, just rolling hard to the rim. See, he's a big, strong kid in there. Good minutes here with Benson on, Benson on the bench. Brown with two on the shot clock, loses the basketball. Drake takes it away, and Penn comes the other way, finds Sturts in transition. He fakes, fires, and draws a foul on Marcus Damas. Damask with his first foul, the Salukis with their eighth. So Sturts will be at the free throw line when we return to the Knapp Center. Big four there, big three by number four, Eric McGill. Southern Illinois leads it by 11. Uh, an outstanding team that Jenny Baranchek has put together and some outstanding three-point shooting in this game exhibited by the Salukis. Yeah, seven and nine from three here in this one. We saw Domask knocking down the first one. He's got 11 points. A three knocked down for Trent Brown, and Eric McGill knocked down his second one. He's got nine, so 11 points for Domask. Domask, 10 for Benson, nine for McGill. Pacing the Salukis, that is 30 out of their 35 points coming from the heavy hitters. Seven of nine from the three-point line. They are a 33% three-point shooting team on the season. Sturts now with a total of eight points, three in a row from the free throw line. As the sophomore from Newton, Iowa misfires that time in Southern Illinois, up the court with a 10 point lead in three minutes and 42 seconds left to play in the first half. Barrett Benson with those two fouls remains on the bench for Southern Illinois and a travel called on Carrington Davis as he catches it in stride and can't put the ball down the court. Sturts out, Murphy back in, playing with two fouls himself. Noah Thomas also comes in to play the point, so it's Thomas and Murphy up front, Jackson Wilkins, and Pilipovich. Nice bounce feed to Thomas from Wilkins. And that, that's what you have to do against this Saluki defense. When, they, when you get spaced out, they're out in passing lanes, cutting off those passes. Have to make timely cuts as Thomas did there. And go to the rim, ready to finish. McGill's fall away, not there. Wilkins tries to tap it out, and he taps that out of bounds, trying to tap it to a teammate. Darren DeVries animated on the Drake bench as he sets the defense. Watch this, a good patience that time. DJ Wilkins and a smart cut from Noah Thomas going hard to the rim, so fast when he decides he wants to go hard in a direction. It's hard to stay in front of him. He's one of the prettiest plays in basketball, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. The mask finding Anthony Murphy leaves it to the left, and the rebound taken down by Antonio Pilipovich. Noah Thomas speeds down the court for Drake. Wilkins tries the three. The rebound snared by Carrington Davis. That's what you want, though. You want those secondary break looks before the defense can get set. Lance Jones will try a three. It spins out, but DeMarcus, rather, Marcus Damask right there to put it back in. He's got 13 points. And see, that's what I mean about Domask. He finds the areas to score. He's not necessarily going to wow you with his off-the-dribble game. He's very capable, can take people off the dribble, but he finds angles. He reads plays. He understands defenses so well, he just finds ways to chip away and get buckets. Noah Thomas runs out of room, so he pitches to Wilkins with two on the shot clock. Shot won't go down, and there's the foul called on the rebound scramble. Filipovich trying to block out, and he commits the foul. And that time, that time a silly foul for Filipovich. That going over the bas back of Marcus Domask. Domask now gets an opportunity to go to the free throw line, as that's the seventh team foul on the Bulldogs, even though it was. 90 feet away from the rim on the other end. The mask newcomer of the week in the Missouri Valley Conference this week for the second time this year. Averaged 15 points, seven and a half rebounds, and four assists against Illinois State and Northern Iowa. And he has a 14 point first half, got 10 out, 10 points out last time out against the Bulldogs. Ronnie Suggs Jr. back onto the floor for Southern Illinois. Damask is one of just four freshmen in the country who's averaging better than 14 points and better than five rebounds a game. Oh, and by the way, fall semester, 4-0 GPA. Ah. 
pretty, pretty good package there, huh? Yeah, pretty impressive what he's been able to do. And you went through his recruiting story a little bit early. Interesting to see how early on in his career is a bit of a bailout call that time. Yesifu, after coming into the game, missed, a f missed the last few, left his feet. Pretty dangerous play. Low percentage, but got bailed out with the blocking foul. Yesifu playing for the first time since the Air Force game on December 21st. He's been sidelined with a dislocated kneecap. He just comes in and immediately gets right into the action. So he's played in 12 games for the Bulldogs this year, averaging four points per ball game, and has now hit 14 of 16 free throw attempts. A freshman from Bolingbrook, Illinois, where he was honorable mention All-State. Did a lot of rehab to get back and play this season. He knocks down both free throws. And the Bulldogs closed to within 10. And that's really been the story about the last five or six minutes. Drake scoring against Southern Illinois, mm -hmm. but getting no stops at the other end. The Salukis have been very efficient on offense, especially shooting the three ball. Yeah, and th this Saluki team, not necessarily a group that's going to put up a lot of points. They're 334th out of 351 in the country in scoring, but approaching 40 points here already in the first half, shooting it really well. Seven to shoot. McGill fires and misses. Wow. And the ball's tipped in. Was it by Wilkins? No, that, 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 that just came off the rim. A friendly roll for Eric McGill and a big smile on his face after that one went through, knocking down another triple. Not going to see that one fall many times. Yesifu for three. Point lead here for the Salukis on the road. Their biggest of the first half and a timeout taken by Brian Mullins. The use it or lose it timeout with 46 wow. seconds left to play in the half and he has to be really thrilled with the way his team is playing. They give up an average of 60 points a ball game, so defensively one of the top teams in the country, yet today the offense has been there. Yeah, and high hop by McGill and bounces bouncing in. Bouncing up off the rim. Look at this bounce, look at that. Up, it goes over the backboard as high as the shot clock. Friendly roll, good rotation, good release. Sometimes when you got it, you just got it. Eric McGill knocking down his third three of this basketball game puts him up to 12 points. Well, he's had a big week. He got 27 against yeah. Loyola on Wednesday night when the Salukis won 68-63. So well on his way to being the conference player of the week. Yeah, listen, we talked about how much confidence matters, and sometimes confidence gives you the friendly rolls as well. When it's going your way, it's going your way. And for this Saluki ball club to knock down eight threes here in this first half, build the 13 point margin, have a chance to extend it here with their final possession, most likely their final possession of this first half. Big thing for Southern Illinois, they've been able to contain this lead or maintain this lead with Benson on the bench with those two fouls. The mask on the miss, Suggs fights for the rebound but can't control it and Drake will get it with 38.8 to play. So Southern Illinois, will get another possession most likely. And a smart play call there for Brian Mullins. Get a quick hitter so they can go two for one. Still going to be an eight second difference between the shot clock and game clock. SIU probably get another good look. Yesifu finds Thomas. Look how hard the Bulldogs are having to work to get good shots. Again, Southern Illinois giving up just 60 points a ball game. And also one of the teams that Fuse the fouls very little. Three seconds, two seconds, one second on the shot clock. Yesifu with the miss. But Filipovich runs down the rebound. Drake has three seconds left to score. To end the half, Yesifu caught it, and it did not go down. That would not have counted anyway. It came after the buzzer. And so the first half concludes with Southern Illinois enjoying their biggest lead of the first half at 13 points. Yeah, and great defense overall in that first half for the Salukis. Coach Brian Mullins and his staff have to be happy not only with the way they shot the ball here in the Knapp Center, but also the difficult defense. They were 8 of 12 behind the three-point line in the first half. That's propelled them to a 42-29 lead at Drake at halftime. At halftime at Southern Illinois, of a 42-29 lead over Drake. We take a look at our impact players in the first half. Yeah, and Marcus Domas can't say enough about the first half. He had very efficient from the floor, did a good job defending and rebounding, and those 15 points really big to help build this margin. And Garrett Sturts kept his team in it, coming off the bench, eight points, 
get, got a couple timely back cuts, some pretty good defense and checkouts. And, you know, you, you look at this margin and you think without that extra offense from Garrett Sturge, this could be a bigger margin. The bench with 14 of Drake's 29 points. Let's take a look around the valley. One game has been completed, well, two have been completed already. The Panthers remain in first place. They up their record to eight and two, 19 and three overall with that win at Evansville. Yeah, Evansville was down big and this one uh, brought it back into single digits, but Northern Iowa just too much. A nice road win for the Panthers. Panthers looking outstanding and again, separating themselves a little bit. Indiana State with a big road win after beating Drake at home on yep. Wednesday night. They come down to Missouri State, the preseason pick to win the conference and win by 10. Yeah, the struggles for Missouri State continue. A good road win for Indiana State. It's been well documented how well home teams have done in this conference so far this year. Anytime you get a chance to go on the road and steal a, a victory, it's really big time for your ball club. We saw two early in the Valley scores today. Illinois State at Valparaiso later on tonight and also tonight it'll be this is a big one. Bradley yep. and Loyola, they are both 6-3, and three, tied along with Southern Illinois for second place in the Valley, and so obviously that's a huge game. Yeah, and Bradley has had a number of injuries. You see him sitting at 6-3. and three. They've been a pleasantly surprising team. Darrell Brown's missed a few games. So, you know, I think this Bradley bunch has just shown a resilience that Coach Brian Wardle has been really infectious with his program. But look at that log jam in the standings and shows you how important this one is See if Drake can overcome this 13-point deficit. This would be a big road win for the Salukis to build their confidence. If Drake wins this one, they would have overcome their biggest deficit of the season. Benson had a really good first half. He pitches it out to Damask, who picks up where he left off by knocking down his fourth three, and he has 18 points. And that's not a guy you can help off of. You want to help on the inside on Barrett Benson because he's had such an effective floor game, but you can't help off. Marcus Domas, the best three-point shooter on this team, and he's been going early. Domas, we mentioned, two-time newcomer of the week in the Valley, including last week, former Wisconsin Mr. Basketball. Robbins pitches to Murphy, does a great job just catching it, puts up the shot, can't finish, and it is Barrett Benson, the six-foot-ten performer with the rebound. McGill in deep to score. Nice. Good hesitation move, throws Liam Robbins as McGill was coming up in transition, and again, the big time players for Southern Illinois making big time plays. Don't mask first, that time McGill building this margin to 18. And this does not surprise me at all. Darren DeVries will use the timeout. Yeah, no kidding. He Stop the momentum. This one get away early with back to back baskets by the Salukis to start the second half. They extend the lead to 47 to 29. SIU, the first four of the second half on a 12 2 run dating back to the waning moments of the first half and they've opened an 18 point lead against the Bulldog team that's undefeated at home this year and has won 15 in a row and over the last three years has the best home record in the Missouri Valley Conference of 35 and 5. Ironically one of those five losses was to Southern Illinois ah. in 2018. Yeah and, and you know the Southern Illinois give a lot of credit to coach Brian Mullins for what this group's been able to do the last four games and so far in the first 21 minutes here in the Knapp Center, doing everything they can to disrupt this Bulldog offense and executing well on the defensive end. Antonio Pilipovich has replaced Liam Robbins in the Bulldog lineup. So Robbins plays only a minute and 10 seconds in the second half, and then when DeVries calls the timeout, he sits Robbins. Yeah, he was pretty upset with Anthony Murphy and Liam Robbins giving up those early points. Sending Robbins to the bench, and Benson big on the interior. Does a great job recognizing, and a good pass on the top from Domas. The and one opportunity for Benson, the big body on the inside. Filipovic commits the foul. And watch that. You know, Larry, one of the things, if you're going to be a good shooter, part of what you have to develop in your game is to be a great passer. Here's why. You're going to create space and attention with the defense coming after you and really closing out on you with the basketball. That's going to create opportunity for your teammates if they can snake behind the defense and get open. And Domask, a, a willing passer, a nice feed on the interior. Here's Murphy for three for the Bulldogs' first points of the second half after the Salukis had scored seven unanswered. And a nice knockdown from Noah Thomas. Big time needed bucket for the Bulldogs. Spinning his way to the basket. 
Lance Jones, are not able to finish. Thomas quickly up with the rebound. Nice Pitches pass. the corner and open Pilipovic for three. How about the energy, Noah Thomas, defense on one end, offense on the other, knocks down a three, and the find of Pilipovic. Brian, coach Brian Mullins calling timeout. He sees that lead back down to 15. But both coaches have already used two of their allotted four timeouts as we go down the stretch. The Bulldogs, after a slow start to the half, coming alive. Thomas maybe igniting this team as they try to make a comeback effort against Southern Illinois. Yeah, and so fast in transition is Noah Thomas, and Filipovic did a good job getting his feet set there. But, you know, I think part of the reason Coach Brian Mullins called timeout wasn't that Drake made two shots. He knows that this team's going to make a run. But what he didn't like from his team was Lance Jones taking that ball to the rim with so much time left on the shot clock, shooting a contested shot. Once you get in the half court game, he wants his team to move the basketball, find an open look, but not necessarily force it early in the shot clock to give Drake that momentum. We talked about the terrific job that Mullins has done with his squad. They graduated three starters last year who all averaged in double figures. Armand Fletcher, Sean Lloyd Jr. and KB and Pippen. And then they were excited to have Aaron Cook come back and he got hurt in December. So in essence, they're playing without four starters from last year. And that's part of why it's taken this team a little bit of time to figure out not only their roles and responsibilities, but get comfortable with what Coach Mellons is asking him to do. Filipovic with the steal, he loses the basketball. Darren DeBreeze, not very happy about that. Either the call, which lacked a foul, I think he thinks, and Southern Illinois will get the ball back. And a nice play this time for Pilipovic, but look at the hustle. Eric McGill, there is no quit in this Saluki ball club. They're not gonna give you anything easy, not even what could have been an uncontested layup. Great hustle from McGill to force that turnover. Ryan Mullins really likes his team. He likes the fact that he said every day at practice, they bring it. Yeah, and they they're certainly to, bringing it this afternoon. They used to call Southern Illinois floor, born, floor burn you because this team, so gritty, so tough, willing to get on the floor. Every game was going to be a fight. Vincent tries to move into crowded territory. Murphy hits the deck. Wow, and a scary play as we see Anthony Murphy going over the top. Good sportsmanship for both these guys. Anthony Murphy jumping up to try to block that shot. And, Falling down, could have fallen on his head or neck. Really scary moment. Great to see him pop up and be okay. And Bear Benson, as soon as he drew that foul and went over, checked on Anthony Murphy. If you're a basketball player, you've seen that play a number of times. Always one of the scariest things when guys go airborne. It is frightening. The mask against Murphy. Murphy now with three fouls into mask. Takes advantage of that, knocks it down over him. He has 20 points, his career high. 24 against Texas San Antonio. And when I made the comparison earlier to a young Doug McDermott, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Damas just, you can't speed the guy up. He understands where he wants to get the basketball on the floor. He understands his size advantage. Just does a great job using body position and to score and using angles. The mask who originally signed at Northern Kentucky, but a coaching change, he decided to reopen the recruiting situation and Pat Monahan, who's the assistant at Southern Illinois, was on the Wisconsin Milwaukee staff. He'd recruited him there. Brian Mullins then talked to him about Loyola and so the connection was made. The mask comes to Carbondale and it could be quite a story before it's all said and done. Sturts with no time left on the shot clock with the miss. Benson tries to control the rebound. Can't Jones tried to keep it in bounds and couldn't and so Drake keeps it. And talking about Domask, we saw the replay here a second ago. And, you know, just the patience he has with the basketball in his hands, the knowledge and understanding of the floor game and spacing, knowing when to pick and choose his spots. He's been so impressive to watch. Plays like a senior, but he's only a freshman. A lot of schools around this conference are not excited about the future of Marcus Domask. But this Southern Illinois Saluki faithful have to be really excited about his potential. Filipovic tries to get around Benson and Benson pushes him and picks up his third foul. Now that's big. That third foul may send Barrett Benson to the bench with Liam Robbins on the bench right now. That's an advantage on the interior for the Salukis. I thought it was a travel there on Filipovic, but officials that time getting a bump on Benson. Benson will come out replaced by Carrington Davis and also onto the court Trent Brown. The freshman from Arizona, 6'2", 175-pounder. 
Drake trying to get something going at the offensive end. Thomas looking for something to happen. Nobody able to get the ball open, so he scores it himself. Noah Thomas has been big off the bench here in the second half for Drake. Knocked down a three, assisted for a three, and that time the fadeaway jumper taking it back to a 15-point margin. McGill against Penn. Now the switch, and Sturtz has got him. Carrington Davis looks for three. The rebound taken by D.J. Wilkins. Crowd trying to get Drake back into this one. Biggest crowd of the season looking on as Thomas looks for three. McGill with the rebound, and there's a push underneath. And it'll go against Southern Illinois. Looks like they got Suggs that time trying to box out Garrett Sturtz. Added an extra possession here for the Bulldogs for the hustle with Sturtz. Suggs with his second foul. Noah Thomas trying to inject some life into this Bulldog offense. He does it himself on that one and Drake's back within 15. Drake looking for a spark, trailing by as many as 21. Right now, 52-37 in favor of the Salukis. And maybe Noah Thomas is the spark Drake's looking for. Yeah, he's knocked down a three. He's assisted on a three. He's got a rebound, picked up an assist. Five points for him here in this second half off the bench as we see the nice find in transition. And Noah Thomas has one thing that hard, that's hard to compete with. His elite skill is his speed and especially his ability to get from one end of the floor to the other. And given the Saluki's fits here in the second half, keeping Drake in this one after the early run in the second half for the Saluki's. And after shooting two of 11 in the first half from behind the three-point line, the Bulldogs two out of three shooting the three ball. Here in this half, Lehman Robbins has come back into the lineup for the Bulldogs at the timeout, as is Roman Penn, who has been struggling, just one of five from the floor and just two assists. And you got both Barrett Benson and Liam Robbins battling on the inside, so the big fella's playing even with Benson and those three fouls. Tough luck shot for Penn, in and out. And when it's hard to be a point guard playing against the Salukis because they make you work everywhere you are on the floor. Benson, couple of moves on Robbins, and Robbins trying to contain him, commits the foul, and that will be his third. Now the Drake faithful not happy about that one as Roman Penn looked like he had it clean underneath. See if we can take a look. Look at Roman Penn coming from the backside, but what they got was Robbins with that hand on the back of the head. I think a pretty good call that time by the official. Barrett Benson, a 68% free throw shooter won't be shooting here as they rule the foul occurred on the floor prior to the shot and so inbounding will be Trent Brown Benson really playing well in his two outings against Drake this season open look for Davis Carrington Davis drills the three his sixth of the season and that, that's part of what Carrington Davis brings. He's a big body, plays a lot of that backup five position, even though he's only six foot six, but has an ability to space the floor and shoot it. Hasn't made a ton of them, doesn't play a ton of minutes, but he's capable. Robbins knocks down a baseline jumper. His eighth point, his first basket of the second half. Liam Robbins, a guy this Drake ball. Drake Bulldog Ball Club needs to get going. He can be somebody that alleviates a lot of pressure if he can score without taking dribbles in the post. Southern Illinois, hottest team in the conference right now. Penn going for the takeaway. And getting his first foul. Already four fouls early in the half against the Bulldogs compared to two against the Salukis. And you can, you can just sense that this Drake ball club is putting a little pressure on themselves, trying to build up and cut into this margin as we see the take. Domas drawing a foul on Noah Thomas. The Drake faithful not very happy as that's five whistles here in the first six minutes against the Bulldogs on defense. And you take a look at that one, and yeah, there's definitely contact. There's been contact on each side. Domas doing a good job, though, going strong through that contact and getting to the bucket. He is an 81% free throw shooter. I haven't seen anything he doesn't do well so far. And, you know, he was he was hovering around that 90% mark early in the season. 
Struggled a little bit from the free throw line in recent games, but his stroke is pure. He's a smart basketball player. You know, I, th I think one of the things he'll develop as he gets a little older, he's a willing passer, but he's a guy right now that's only averaging just under three assists a game. I think with the focus and attention that's going to be on him now and for years to come, he'll continue to evolve as a passer. Steve Jarek has replaced Barrett Benson in the lineup for Southern Illinois. Wilkins gets fouled. Or do they? Yeah, it looks like now they're going to get, as officials can see, can feel the tensions rising, trying to take control of this one. Look for the officials maybe to settle this one down a little bit, calling a lot of that body contact. Eric McGill picking up the foul. Wilkins off the baseline. Has it two in a row. Yeah, we saw him take that same shot in the first half. That's a really tough move, tough to defend. Almost like a jump hook that time for DJ Wilkins. Bulldogs fight back to within 16. So Southern Illinois comes in build as an outstanding defensive team, but their offense has been very precise this afternoon. Their three-point shooting has been superb. Here's McGill down the lane with the kick. The mask for three. With three on the shot clock. Dermott gets the rebound, tied up by Liam Robbins. Saluki's almost coming away with an offensive rebound. Robbins reacting to it quickly. And again, good hustle by the backup big fella. Getting inside, throwing his body around, has given this team good minutes. Take away, Garrett Sturts. Sturts to finish. That's really the first time we've seen an open look for the Bulldogs out in transition. Coach Darren DeVries trying to pick up this full court pressure, get his team turning that offense into, or excuse me, turning their defense into offense. Saluki's 21 point lead reduced to 14. McGill has it taken away by Sturts. Two swipes in a row by Sturts. Wilkins for three. The crowd comes alive, the biggest crowd of the season at home for the Bulldogs come alive on that Wilkins three. And what was a 21-point lead is now an 11-point lead for Southern Illinois. And how about the run for the Drake Bulldogs forcing another timeout for Coach Brian Mullins. He's only going to have one left after this. Getting it down to 11. Defense turning to offense. Garrick Sturts, big-time hustle plays. Sturts a couple of steals to trigger the Bulldogs. Come back to within 11. A timeout with 12.08 left to play in regulation at Southern Illinois by 11. Drake finding their way back from a 21-point deficit to within 11, triggered by Garrett Sturts in two plays at the defensive end. Yeah, the first to steal off the inbounds. Good hustle for Noah Pop Thomas to cut off Domask there. And the finish, and this time, crafty hands getting it out in transition. And Roman Penn finds DJ Wilkins, who's a little bit of a five-point streak on, of his own, so this Drake team pulling it now within 11, forcing a timeout from Coach Brian Mullins, but they're doing it by using a lot, utilizing their defense, creating offense from their defense, getting up and down the floor. It's the best way to attack this Saluki, this Saluki team defensively. And in addition to those two steals, Sturts leading the team in scoring with 10 has also drawn five fouls by the opposition. The crowd chance defense is Southern Illinois has Benson back on the floor along with McGill, Damas, Davis. Benson tries to work against Robbins. Robbins gets his third block, recovers it, puts it in, and a jump ball call. No block, but a jump ball called by Tom O'Neill. Great gets it on the possession arrow. And pretty good defense that time. Almost forced a couple turnovers. And Benson and Robbins, boy, that's been a fun matchup, hasn't it, Larry, on yes, the inside? Has. Those two battling big bodies. This time, Liam Robbins does a good job again, not moving. Going up and deflecting that one, his third block. At seven foot, he has a two-inch height advantage over Benson. Benson about five pounds heavier. And the shot rims in by Robin Penn to pull the Bulldogs back to single digits. Big, and it's a 10 to nothing great run big time knockdown roman penn the drake faithful you mentioned it at the start biggest crowd of the year getting behind the bulldogs trying to trim this one 
Saluki's trying to silence the crowd. Lance Jones blocked by Robbins. Recovered by Wilkins. Then Wilkins with the misread against Sturts, who was cutting to the basket. Wilson threw it, or Wilkins threw it where Sturts had been. Now we're going to take a look at Roman Penn and look at the attention that Liam Robbins draws. Eric McGill just takes one step towards helping on the inside. That's enough for Roman Penn to have space to knock down that three. So Drake, two threes in the first half, but already four here in the second half in eight tries. And picking up the defensive intensity here, giving Southern a bit of a dose of their own medicine, forcing them out further behind the three-point line. Benson with a hook shot that's short with Robbins grabbing the rebound. Earlier, you got the feeling that Benson got in the head of Robbins. Yep. You don't get that feeling now. Well, and Liam Robbins was sent to the bench early in this second half. Wasn't doing what his coach wanted on the defensive side. Now has made a couple good defensive plays. DJ Wilkins misses that short 17-footer. Lance Jones comes up with the loose basketball for the Salukis. They're trying to win their fifth in a row. It started with the win against Drake. They've also knocked off Northern Iowa, Illinois State, and Loyola in this win streak. Jones challenges Thomas. Shot clock down to seven. Suggs into the lane, misfires. Sturtz grabs the rebound for the Bulldogs. He's got five rebounds. And again, good defense that time. Garrett Sturtz has played really good minutes for Coach Darren DeVries. Not highly recruited out of high school, back barely recruited at all on the Division I level. Wilkins for three. The roof might have come off had that one gone down. Because nice, the crowd really into this one. Nice find that time for Liam Robbins. That skip pass across the side. Doing a good job as a facilitator in there. Part of his maturation in his second year. The mask against the shorter Thomas. The mask with a two-inch height advantage. And Thomas tries to poke the ball away and commits the foul. And that is the sixth foul against Drake. So Southern Illinois could be shooting a lot of free throws down the stretch in this one. Meanwhile, Southern Illinois called with just three fouls, and they are 14th in the country mm -hmm. in fewest fouls. Mm -hmm. They don't put you on the line very often. No, and that's that's a big part of their success. They don't give you anything easy, and that includes free throws. This team plays so good defensively, shows their hands, moves their feet so well. Yeah, <laughs> outstanding defense without fouling. Can't say enough about what Coach Brian Mullins has done just in a short time as the head guy for the Salukis. Sturts almost with another takeaway. And he's active hands in the passing lane, isn't he, Larry? He's been really good at anticipating getting a good angle on the defensive end. Brent Brown replaces Lance Jones for Southern Illinois. Five seconds for the Salukis to shoot it. McGill trying to get free of Thomas. Pulls up, fires, Tough. and scores. Yes, wow. it was. How about Eric McGill again? Not to be denied. The big time knockdown at the end of the shot clock as Drake was getting momentum. Robbins works his way inside against Barrett Benson, but it spins out. Murphy there for the putback. It won't go. Robbins tries a putback. It won't go. Murphy tries a putback. It won't go. And Damask comes out with a loose basketball. Benson ahead of the pack. Nice job by Wilkins to catch up to him. Damask calls for it, fires it, scores Big. it. Wow, how about the play? Barrett Benson, not only the defense on one side, hustling down the floor in the good find out, out on the exterior. Damask, a big time knockdown. Those are heart-wrenching threes if you're a Bulldog fan. A career high 25 points for Marcus Damask. Damask is one of those guys who's played so much and been so prominent as a freshman as Sturt scores that in four years, people are going to be saying he seems like he's been around yeah. six or seven. I think for uh, if, if you're a lot of teams, even the first time through the Valley was seeing enough of Marcus Domask, but he's been exceptional here with 25. So Luke, he's built the lead back to double digits with seven and a half left to play. McGill trying to shake Sturts. Shot clock inside 10. The mask 
wants to take it to the rack. Gets inside, dishes at the last moment to Benson. Robbins goes for the block. Robbins is going to get a foul. A heck of a five for Domas because he was drawing the defense. Benson in the right spot, going up strong. And Liam Robbins has committed his fourth foul. So we have a timeout with 7.18 to play. There's the foul. Crowd didn't like it, thought it was a clean block. Robbins obviously objected as well, but Southern Illinois leads at 63-51. The Bulldogs trailed by 21 points. They cut it to single digits, but the Zalukis knocking down back-to-back -back threes and lead at 63-51. We said in the first half, big-time players make what? Big-time plays, and Eric McGill, look at that, the tough step back. And here, Barrett Benson, a good find as he almost was tied up, but finds Marcus Domask and those three, 25 for Domask, 13 for Benson, 17 for Eric McGill, 55 of the 63 points for the Salukis, the three-headed monster boy. Those three have been tough in this one. Southern Illinois has knocked down 10 three-point shots this afternoon in 16 tries. Correct, I make it 12. 12 out of 18 from three. You look at the three-point proficiency, 67% from the from the three-point line for the Salukis. Now 10 of 11 from the free throw line. Conversely, you look at the Drake Bulldogs, six of 18 from three. Part of that just shows Southern doing a great job, getting good shots on one end and making sure Drake is uncomfortable on offense, not giving up anything easy. Benson now with 15 points, his career best, 18. That was January the 19th against Drake. So he has been very difficult for the Bulldogs to contain, to say the least. Batted down by McGill and picked up by Damask. The Drake turnover gives Southern Illinois the ball with less than seven to play. The defense just closes down angles so well. Something that's normally comfortable as we see another nice find on the interior for Damask. And then Lance Jones fires home from the outside. Without Liam Robbins in there, BM Barrett Benson, as you see Liam Robbins going to the scorer's table, Barrett Benson just too much to handle for Drake. Filipovich trying to control it. Now Thomas fouls and scores. Eight points for Noah Thomas, most he's scored in a while. In fact, his career high came as a freshman against Southern Illinois when he got 24. And that time, not the way you draw it up. No. If you're in the coach's room, but no less effective. A big bucket for Noah Thomas, keeping Drake within 15. And now the Saluki's able to play at a pace they're comfortable mm -hmm. with. The mask lobbing for Benson. Nice. He beats Filipovich. Filipovich trying to deny him, fouls him. And Benson does such a great job getting position. And you can tell there's a chemistry between Benson and Domask. Damas, the nice find over the top, has such a good touch for those long passes. Benson sealing, given enough space for big guys. When If you're a younger guy and you want to be a big, you got to figure out how to find an opportunity for your teammates to deliver the basketball. That time, Barrett Benson was sealing and getting fronted, but he moved his man up the lane so there was enough space for Domas to throw it over the top before Benson had to compete with the backboard. The Robins with four fouls back onto the court for the Bulldogs. A 16-point game for Benson. He's a 68% free throw shooter who had hit his first five prior to that miss. And you get a sense for Coach Darren DeVries. It's kind of do or die time getting Liam Robbins in the game with five and a half minutes to go with this 16-point deficit. Either you're going to mount a comeback now or could be all she wrote as we see the Drake faithful that time. Lance Jones going around that screen. Could have been potentially the fifth foul on Liam Robbins. A little nervous energy as the ref blew the whistle. So Drake will inbound on the person of Anthony Murphy, 5.49 to play. Robbins picked up his fourth foul at 7.18, and it was less than a minute and a half later that Darren DeVries felt the need to bring him back. Nice pass. How about the big fella showing off the left-handed, off the dribble, bounce pass. Good set drawn up by Coach Darren DeVries, getting an easy bucket. His second assist to go along with eight points, four rebounds, and four blocks. Under five and a half left to play. Southern Illinois trying for their fifth win in a row. And after a 
four and seven start trying to go to 13 and 10. McGill finds an opening to the basket. Penn comes back on him with one on the shot clock. It doesn't draw iron. Shot clock violation gives the ball to Drake. And the Drake defense picking up, trying to pick up their, extend their defense out toward half court. Need a lot of stops, need the string three or four in a row. Get buckets to claw back within this one. Drake, two timeouts left. Southern Illinois with one. Southern Illinois has the possession arrow. Exactly five to play as Robbins hands to Penn. Penn to the baseline. Benson with the rebound. He has played a ton. Sixth rebound to go along with 15 points. Last time out against Drake, 18 points, 10 rebounds. And the Salukis perfectly content to walk it up. The clock on their side here with this 14-point margin. Southern Illinois' high water mark as far as points this year, 76. Robbins goes for the block. But if this is a foul on him, it will be number five. But, but it isn't going to be on him. Looks like they got Anthony Murphy. Murphy. That's going to be his fourth. And Domask again, ho-hum. What is he doing? He's getting himself with an opportunity to pick up more points. So he's going baseline, a lot of contact there. That's a, that's a tough call, I think, if you're a Drake Bulldog fan. But Domask again puts himself in a position to force the officials to make a call. Goes to the free throw line. You know, we talked about free throws and how Southern Illinois rarely fouls. Drake has been to the line six times in this ball game. Yeah. And none in the second half, by the way. Meanwhile, Drake has committed nine team fouls, and so the Saluki Club will be in the double bonus on the next one. A 26-point career best for the freshman, Marcus Dumas. Sturts considered a three, finds Robbins. Sturts goes inside, works against Benson, scores, and draws a foul on Benson, and that'll be his fourth. And Sturts working on a heck of a game himself. Boy, just been much more aggressive on the offensive end. Active hands on defense, good pump fakes that time, gets Benson off balance, and one opportunity for Sturts. Got eight 14. Points, eight points, eight rebounds against Indiana State on Wednesday night. Has 14 points in this one. If he hits this one, they'll have a season high, career high last year against McKendry, when he got 18. Benson with the rebound. Bulldogs running out of time as we near the four minute mark. Again, the Salukis comfortable running some clock. The mask misses off the front iron. Thomas with the rebound. Salukis react well defensively, so Thomas has to slow it down. Robbins in traffic with the miss. The tip there by Sturts. Yeah, how about Sturts again on the back side? Another big time bucket. Good feed on that interior pass to Robbins. Season high, 16 for Sturts. And Southern again, breaking that pressure, but perfectly content to run some clock. Good ball handlers. They've gotten good shots between McGill and Domask at the end of the shot clock. Bulldogs cut it to 11 as McGill tries to clear some space. Now Jones, six seconds to shoot. Jones and Sturts collide, and they're going to rule the foul on Sturts, I believe. Yep, Garrett Sturts gets the foul. So the Salukis will go to the foul line with 3.10 to play. This will be the double bonus. They lead by 11 at 70 to 59. It's Southern Illinois with an 11 point lead at 3.10 to play. Be sure to stay tuned in C22 for G League basketball. Following tonight's game, the Iowa Wolves return to Wells Fargo Arena to host Agua Caliente Clippers. Then Tuesday morning, the Wolves play a 10-30 contest with the Westchester Knicks. Catch both games live on MC22. And it's the former Southern Illinois player, KB and Pippen, by the way, who plays for Agua Caliente.
Lance Jones, who has not scored, goes to the foul line, has taken back, it's not been to the free throw line, has scored a three-pointer in this one, goes to the line with 310 to play, his team leading by 11. And you saw before this foul, part of what makes him so special and why this coaching staff is so high on Lance Jones. Got some boogie to him, getting Garrett Sturts, putting him on skates as he drew that foul. Southern Illinois now three of, or 13 I should say, of 17 from the foul line, while the Bulldogs have been there only seven times against the team that is 14th in the country and the fewest fouls per game. And that's one of the advantages this Saluki group enjoys because of the way they play defense so well with their feet and, and willing to attack the rim. They got individual ball handlers like Eric McGill or guys that attack off angles like Marcus Domask that draw a lot of fouls and get to the free throw line. That, by the way, just the seventh great turnover. So you can win some statistics, but they don't tell yep. the full story. Yeah. My time seven turnovers ought to be put you in the game if not winning it, right? Yeah, no kidding. And you look, they're shooting 45% from the floor, only 33% from three, though. So Saluki Ball Club, so good on defense, makes everything hard. Robbins gets his fifth block. Murphy will go to the line. And again, a hard ball for Anthony Murphy as he went to the rim. A lot of athleticism on display here. Liam Robbins deflecting that one with the left hand and then out in transition. Garrett Sturge pers pushing the break, gives it up to Anthony Murphy and watch Lance Jones, the little fella going up and getting that thing. Kind of scary as you see him both fall. Lance Jones falling on his black. Anthony Murphy falling on his front side. Those Murphy, you took a tough fall yeah. earlier today. Those airborne plays, always scary. Les Jones just kind of limping over to the bench, hoping he's okay. Nine points for Murphy. Jones with four fouls, exiting. Great back with the ten at 236. And full court pressure. That's the last time out for the Saluki, so Couple Drake runs needed to be stopped with the timeout. Now two and a half minutes to play. Out of timeouts, they call timeout inbound in the basketball. Good defense for the Bulldogs. Ryan Mullins talking it over with Ronnie Suggs Jr. Southern Illinois on the road next on Wednesday to play Evansville. The Bulldogs home against Bradley on Wednesday at eight o'clock. Again, I'll note an eight o'clock game. Normally those weekday games start at seven o'clock. This will be eight o'clock. You look at Brian Mullins, we mentioned he was an outstanding player at Southern Illinois, already in their Hall of Fame. Holds the school record for assists and steals, and a guy you never enjoyed playing against. No, and, and he's really found a way to instill that mentality in his team. Brian Mullins was tough, he was hard-nosed, made all the right winning plays. He could pass, he could score, but it was his defense that was what made him special. The Missouri Valley Conference returns to Tax Layer Center in Moline, Illinois. March 12th through 15th for the 2020 Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Championship. As you look at some of the Bulldog squad members watching this one, reserve your seat to Hoops in the Heartland by ordering tickets online today at NBCQuadCities.com. Great women at home tomorrow. They hope to extend a home court winning streak, which is at 15. Meanwhile, the Bulldogs 15 game home court winning streak at Jeopardy. And for the last two and a half minutes here, look for Drake to really pick up this full court pressure. Need to create some turnovers as this Saluki ball club pretty sure handed with the basketball. Suggs inbounding. The mask covered up. Thomas with the steal with the help from Pilipovich. Now the Bulldogs need to score in a hurry. Pen of ball fake, can't get free. Penn rises up over Suggs, misses it. The rebound comes to Thomas. He'll try it. He can't finish it. Thomas tries to save it from going out of bounds and does. Throws it off of Saluki, and the Bulldogs have it with 19 seconds to shoot. How about the hustle and athleticism for Noah Thomas? Felt like he was everywhere on the floor. 
Oh, Thomas, look at that. Going to get that thing and the wherewithal to catch it and throw it off Marcus Domask. Thomas, who's been struggling of late, but a big game today, 11 points, two assists, five of seven shooting. And had some good minutes here in the second half. Went on a little run, knocking down a three, getting out in transition. Thomas penetrates the lane and scores. And now timeout here for Coach Darren DeVries. Wants to get substitutes in, offense, defense. Game gets down to eight points. Look for them to set up pressure. Will the Bulldogs to try to generate another turnover. Watch this, Noah Thomas going hard to his left hand. Slippery spin, just a little right hand floater from the lane, putting it in. So again, Southern Illinois without a timeout. Darren DeVries and the Bulldogs have one left. And it's been an outstanding performance by Southern Illinois from start to finish, but the Bulldogs have shown great tenacity in finding their way back. Yeah, and, and so if you look the last two minutes and six seconds, if you're Brian Mullins in the timeout here, you're telling your team, listen, you got to be strong with the basketball. They're going to trap, but they're not going to foul you. Try, make sure you can break this pressure. Run some shot clock, get a good look. The clock is still on our side. The clock is our friend if you're in that Saluki huddle. And for great coach Darren DeVries is telling his team to create havoc, run and jump, create traps, see if you can get easy buckets. Eight points is doable in the last two minutes, but you need a couple gifts. The mask with the inbounds. And with the ball back in his hands as often as possible, he's an 81% free throw shooter. Brown trying to get around Sturts. Again, the Salukis will pull it back and use clock. It's inside two minutes now at 1.50. Yeah, good job breaking the pressure that time. Brown, as he was knifing through the defense, settling that one out, getting it in McGill's hands. Eight seconds on the shot clock. McGill keeping it in his hands, now finds Brown. Brown gets past Thomas, but can't finish, and it didn't hit the rim, and so a shot clock violation. Here comes Roman Penn for Drake. Pilipovich for three, a big one. Coach Darren DeVries calling a timeout again. Big time knockdown. Pilipovic, a five-point game. Not over in the Nap Center. The Bulldogs have some fight left. Not at all, but it will all be decided on the court now because this is the last timeout either coach has. Yeah, and take a look. Pilipovic squaring it up. Good job. Little two-man game with he and Roman Penn sharing it back and forth. Pilipovic gets his feet set. A little bit of extra space there from Benson, but that one was deep. Look at that, two or three feet behind the three-point line and now palm sweaty for Saluki Nation. Coach Brian Mullins get another, gets another chance to talk to his team. Drake on an 11-1 to run to close the 14-point deficit down to five. At one time, it was a 21-point deficit early in the second half. And Darren DeBreeze has seen his team Certainly not playing their best first half, but come back with great determination here in the second half. Yeah, they, they, they've really played with good energy, especially in this last four or five minute stretch. Determine what was a 14 point margin. Down now to five. Need a stop, 120 to play. Need a stop in a bucket. Gonna have to put on pressure. Can't let the Saluki score. The Salukis who's Season high is 76 points, right now at 71. They give up an average of 60, and the Bulldogs are at 66. Crowd on their feet in the Nap Center. Biggest crowd of the season on this Des Moines hometown team weekend with special jerseys being worn by the Bulldogs. Trent Brown will inbound against the taller Antonio Pilipovich. Fires it for Jones. Jones makes a nice catch, and Thomas fouls him. Looked like maybe a Super Bowl play for tomorrow with a wide receiver and a defensive back. And Noah Thomas with the foul. And Noah Thomas closing in a hurry. hurry. Good play by Lance Jones that time, coming back to the basketball and going high point in that thing to make sure to get it before Noah Thomas could get up there. We'll take a look at it here. Going long. It was a little bit underthrown, and... Lance Jones got up there before Noah Thomas could get airborne. Only a 59% free throw shooter over two this afternoon. Hits a big one there. 
So important at the end of games, having guys on the floor that can knock down big time free throws. For the freshman, Lance Jones put in a tough spot. A three possession game if he's able to convert this one. Ronnie Suggs Jr. back in for Brian Mullins to pressurize free throws by the 59% free throw shooter. And that makes it a three possession game with a minute 18 to go. And can't turn the corner against Miguel. Thomas trying to get free of Suggs. Puts it up, it spins out, and the ball's tipped in. Yeah, heck Anthony of an Murphy effort. with the tip in. Heck of an effort, Anthony it really Murphy. was. Good defense that time for the Salukis. Better offense for Drake. A tip by Sturts, but Damask was able to run it down and then find Ronnie Suggs Jr. to flush it. How about the heady play, Domas to get that thing up ahead to Suggs. Thomas out of control, losing the basketball, and then Pilipovich reaches out and fouls McGill. So the Sulukis go to the line with 46 seconds to play. And a 7.3 possession lead. So this great, great comeback effort looks like it could fall short. And if so, the Bulldogs' home court winning streak will end at 15. That 15, by the way, ninth longest in the country. And you got Brian Mullins asking to see if that was a clear path foul on Pilipovich as he thought McGill was out ahead. I tend to do agree with him. I thought McGill was out in front of all the Drake players and Pilipovich kind of reached from behind. The yeah. officials not even going to go take a look at that thing. Little surprise. McGill still goes to the line shooting two free throws. But I tend to agree with you on that. McGill with 17 points, 27 earlier this week against Loyola. Jonah Jackson, an outstanding three-point shooter, onto the floor for the Bulldogs. McGill silences the crowd by hitting his 18th point. Penn pushes it ahead, but the Bulldogs really have to hurry. Penn able to finish. No timeouts either side, so we're going to see this one run down. Six-point game now, two-possession game, and a foul called on Pilipovich, and he will foul out. And good job getting the ball in Marcus Domask's hands. You just get the sense you're not going to hurt. You're not going to speed him up when he has the basketball. Did a good job creating space. And as you mentioned, Pilipovich fouling out of this one. Hit a couple of big threes for yes. Drake. Gave some great effort in the second half. Yes, he did, and see DJ Wilkins checking in here for Pilipovich. Both these teams going small. We'll switch everything defensively. And at the line, an 81% free throw shooter who has scored a career best 26 points today. Damascus has played all but two minutes of this one. Five of six from the free throw line this afternoon. And he calmly sinks his 27th point of the day. Boy, Larry, how good is he? I mean, this this guy has been fantastic Tremendous. today. Five and nine from three, knocking down free throws, 27 points. Marcus Domask, his Nap Center debut, special. A lot of people are going to remember this one. He certainly will. 28 points for the Southern Illinois freshman, the former Mr. Basketball in the state of Wisconsin. Murphy has it rejected by Damask. Picked up by Brown. Shot clock is off. And reaching in is Murphy to commit the foul. And how about the defense that time, Domask? Getting a deflection against a really athletic player in Anthony Murphy, showing off his versatility on the defensive side. And that's Anthony Murphy's fifth foul. Watch this. So good feet, Domas. Good job keeping his body in front. Second jumper off the floor, deflecting that thing to a teammate. Murphy fouls out with nine points and eight rebounds. Eight rebounds by Anthony Murphy. He's lead the Bulldog in that category. Sturts had seven. McGill goes to the line. So we mentioned he is on fire. He's really lifted the team. Obviously, as Brian Mullen said, playing his best basketball yep. of the season, this senior transfer. 
Well, and, and three great performances for the Salukis. Domask, Benson, McGill were all fantastic on the offensive end in this game. And credit up and down the roster. Every single Saluki that entered this game played great defense, really giving the Bulldogs fits in the half court. Benson with 16, McGill with 18. And when those two players score in double figures, Southern Illinois now 6-0. So the Salukis, the hottest team in the Missouri Valley Conference, remain that way. They up their record to seven and three. Bulldogs about to suffer back-to-back -back losses for the first time in Missouri Valley Conference play. They will fall to five and five overall to 15 and eight on the season. And again, have a 15 game home court winning streak, ninth longest in the country and so Thomas for three. One of the things, Larry, I think two takeaways for me in this game. Number one, this Saluki team is for real. This is no longer just this team is playing well in a short stretch and, you know, that's cute, and they'll just go back to where they're supposed to be at the bottom of the standings. This team is here to stay this year, and if they play offensively like they did in this game, they're going to be a tough out for anybody in this league. That's takeaway number one. My second takeaway, I think, for this Drake Bulldog Club, even though they lost this one, they lost their last game against Indiana State, there is no fight in this ball club. Coach Darren DeVries can at least keep his head high and his staff that this team continued to battle even though the ball wasn't bouncing their way tonight. The Bulldogs come back from a 21-point wind up losing it by seven at 79-72. to 72 And... Two coaches who played in the Missouri Valley Conference squaring off. Darren DeVries, Brian Mullins. Mullins comes out on top of this one. His team goes to 7-3 in the Valley with a final score of 79 for Southern Illinois, 72 for Drake.